leaders from as far back as 550 BC were intent on initiating and permitting religious freedom. This was one of those fundamentals which allowed people to be understanding of each other and dig deep into their personal religious roots for conflict resolution. Sri Lanka will have its first Museum of Religious Freedom, a virtual space brought to life by Minor Matters, dedicated to archiving, learning and critically reflecting the complex histories and contemporary concerns related to the freedom of religion or belief. I turn to Beard Scholar who is reading for her doctorate in history at Oxford University, Shamara Vettimuni, who is the lead researcher on the project. Welcome Shamara and thank you very much for joining us on Selling Co Life. Let's talk. People may argue that we have religious freedom in Sri Lanka, albeit with some warts. Having focused on modern religious identity formation and religious conflict during British rule, what do you think? Currently speaking and focusing on the British colonial period, there was a degree of religious freedom, particularly when compared with the Dutch and Portuguese rule that preceded it. Um, Buddhists were guaranteed certain freedoms and even protections under the 1815 Kandyan Convention, uh, while Hindus and Muslims were also able to practice their religion, albeit without any official state support. Um, but it was in this context of a more religiously permissible atmosphere that we actually witnessed the rise of religious violence. Um, and that's why in this virtual museum project that uh, I'm working on, we're hoping to create a better understanding of the various factors driving religious freedom and the circumstances in which those freedoms can be restricted. And what is the end objective of this museum? It really hopes to make an impact among the youth in Sri Lanka. Um, the way it has designed, gamified almost, like you're playing a video game, and the availability of content in all three languages is part of the approach to appeal to youth from across um, ethnic, religious and linguistic lines. Um, and I suppose the aim is to provide accessible historical education through an alternative approach. So, for example, I mean, the public school history syllabus that children are taught does not adequately address major issues from the 20th or 21st century. Um, while what happened 2000 years ago is important, what's happened in the last 200 years is, in my opinion, equally if not more important. But by shielding uh, the youth from real and troubling issues, the state is not doing enough to ensure that we don't repeat those same mistakes. Um, and instead, we should be encouraging the youth to, to sort of see the direction we're taking by leaning back on historical experience. Uh, and so this virtual museum is an attempt to bridge that gap really in public education. So there have been a series of dialogues on this. What were some of your key findings via these dialogues? The first is that actually there's huge interest in historical learning and education and that's a really gratifying thing to see. Um, so while the content of history teaching matters, perhaps the medium in which it's taught also makes a significant difference. Um, and the second insight I think we've gathered is that these historical events and issues are extremely divisive and they're very real today. Um, and some of that divisiveness comes from misunderstandings or being exposed to only one side of the narrative and that's not the fault of the viewer um, and, and, and that's what we're hoping to offer by providing multiple narratives, truths uh, for different individuals or communities we're trying to suggest that just because one experience is real uh, it doesn't make others experiences any less real or difficult um, because our history of religious freedom is complex um, and, and we can only address the past as well as the present by having respectful open dialogues and accepting others viewpoints without having to disregard your own. If we were to look at similar museums in other countries, how have these museums helped build and sustain religious freedom? I think there are two museum spaces that have really had an impact on me. So this is, this is my personal response. Uh, the first is a more traditional memorial museum, which is in Berlin and called the Memorial uh, to the Murdered Jews of Europe. Um, and the other is less a museum, but a site of horrific atrocity that has been preserved as a stark message to its vi visitors. And that's the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland, its extension Auschwitz-Birkenau, which was an extermination camp. 
but today they are a reminder to us of the utter depravity of human nature and how man can mechanize genocide um and dehumanize people based on their perceived ethnic or religious differences so i feel that these structures memorialize these museum spaces memorialize experience in a far more effective way than words on paper ever can and i hope that they'll help younger generations navigate problems encountered um uh to prevent the repetition of uh, horrors that that took place in the past so thank you very much amara for sharing your experiences in putting the research for this museum together and how it all came about and what your gleanings or what your findings have been that was shamara vetimuni the lead researcher of the museum for religious freedom here in sri lanka world of risks and obstacles we are there to help you reach your goals with 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees our strength is your strength you focus on your goals we will take care of the risks selling for life 